Coming up on WFT's First at Five, local families are struggling to find affordable daycares, rising costs and other major issues they're facing. And it was a team effort to get thirsty animals something to drink after a water main break at Santa Fe College. How the Alachua County Sheriff's Office was able to step in to help. Dara? Temperatures topped out in the 80s today. We'll talk about how long these warmer temperatures are going to last coming up. First at Five starts right now. First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Having adequate and cost-efficient childcare is an issue many North Central Florida parents struggle with. This is WFT's First of Five. I'm Rafael de los Santos. And I'm Charlize Ramos. And there aren't many options to turn to for help. WUFT's Kennedy Chambers is live at the Baby Gator Daycare on UF's campus. Kennedy. Parents tell you proper childcare is a necessary Charlize, burden. I put a call out to parents to hear their stories about childcare insecurities and received dozens of responses. Daycares like the Baby Gator behind me often offer accessibility for working parents, but is among the facilities that have the longest wait list, and that's just one of the issues. Wait lists, overcrowding, and high rates. These factors all make finding childcare difficult for Jessica Graham. Daycare for both of my children at the location they currently go to is $389 a week and that is with a sibling discount. That's more than I make a week. It makes the financial burden of childcare even harder for this single mom of two. My ex said he would help with that and he's not always reliable so if he doesn't help then I have to cover it and then there's late fees. The late fees have changed to $35 a week and that, that's not a lot, but it adds up. For first time mom, Bailey McCurry, spending time with her child is worth more than the price. I just ended up staying home with him and we live like on a little bit of a tighter budget, but it works um, and I get to enjoy time with him. Dorothy Thomas, founder of Child Center for Early Learning says children often miss out on care because of accessibility. It's a huge demand to ask a family to, you know, take their infant to one center and then drive four miles and take their two-year-old to a different center. Um, anybody that's wrangled children in and out of cars knows that that is a, it's more than just an inconvenience. It's, it's sometimes it's prohibitive. Thomas says overcoming child care obstacles is crucial because the early learning years build the foundation. Early childhood is about so much more than learning how to count and learning your letters. It's about the experiences you have interacting with other kids. It's about um, learning how to share and dig digging in the dirt and finding plants and you know all of the experiential things that not all kids have access to. <laughs> access that many parents in Gainesville and the surrounding areas want the opportunity to experience. Department of Health and Human Services says daycare is unaffordable if it is more than 7% of a household's total income. Data from U.S. News and World Report reveals childcare in Florida averages 24% of a household's income. Live from the University of Florida, Kennedy Chambers, WUFT News. A Swanee County mother is facing child neglect charges tonight. Deputies say she left her young children home alone while she went to a bar. 24-year-old Brianna Rosendale was arrested last Thursday. Investigators say they were called to a home in Wellborn for a welfare check. They found a two-year-old and a five-year-old home alone. Deputies say a friend told them Rosendale asked her to babysit, but left the home before she could arrive, leaving the children unsupervised. When confronted by deputies, they say Rosendale told them that she had called another sitter, but that proved to be not true. DCF is also investigating. We finally knocked off the chill and are finally seeing some warmer air. But the hotter temps won't stick around for too long. UF forecaster Derek Getter has more on how long this warmer weather will stick around. Well, I can tell you these warmer temperatures are going to last at least for the next couple of days. I mean, we're just after 5 o'clock this evening, and we're still at 80 degrees in Gainesville, 82 in Cross City, 78 in Stark, and 81 in Crystal River. And when you step out the door this evening, it's feeling a lot like spring. Our dew points, the measure of moisture in the air, are sitting in the mid and upper 60s right now, so it's definitely feeling really humid outside. These are pretty high for this time of year. Now out the door, we're seeing that cloud cover start to decrease. Partly cloudy skies looking west toward the Ben Griffin Hill Stadium. But once you factor in those winds out of the east, southeast, that's why it's feeling particularly warm this evening. So our overnight lows are looking more like our average high temperatures. Notice how we do start to develop some fog early tomorrow morning. I'll let you know which spots have the lowest visibility coming up. 
A training aircraft from Avon Park made a precautionary landing in the runway protection area outside the Gainesville Regional Airport. According to Gainesville Regional Airport's public information officer, the aircraft was forced to land after experiencing engine trouble. There were no reported injuries or damage to the aircraft. The airplane has been moved from its landing spot for inspection. While law enforcement is most well known for fighting crime, the role in serving the community has them helping in sometimes unconventional ways. WFT's Alex Land is live at Santa Fe College with how the Alachua County Sheriff's Office came to the rescue of hundreds of animals in need. When Santa Fe College's water pipes were broken and a boil water notice was set in place, the school was closed for normal operations. But the school's teaching zoo still needed water for its animals. So zoo staff jumped into action to find a water source. One of our main missions is simply to be community partners. Alachua County Sheriff Emery Ganey says that serving the community is one of their biggest priorities. And members of the community include animals. In this case, hundreds of them. When Santa Fe College suffered a water main break Monday, zoo leaders jumped into action to get their animals clean water. That's where the sheriff's office and the University of Florida's horse teaching unit stepped in. Yeah, so we use the water for lots of different things. We obviously, the animals drink it, but we have to wash the produce so that they're getting clean produce. Some of the animals are living in aquatic environments. They live in water. It is crucial to their care and we were able to care for them thanks to this partnership that we have. The zoo is home to more than 70 species that were in need. Within two hours of Santa Fe's call, UF loaned a 300-gallon water tank to them, but needed escort of the ACSO to deliver it. And so we could continue on our day, clean and care for the animals up to the high standards that we always do. Sheriff Ganey tells me the department is about more than just enforcing the law. Yes, we have a law enforcement role, but every opportunity that we get to do uh, community related work, partnership with different organizations and different people. We absolutely love to do it. We can think of nothing better for law enforcement agencies to do to be good community and corporate partners. Thanks to the actions of this partnership, animals at the Santa Fe College Teaching Zoo can still be cared for in a time of need. Zoo staff are still waiting on official word of when they can use their water. But thanks to the delivery, they still have plenty in reserves to care for the animals. Reporting live in Gainesville, Alex Land, WUFT News. Several counties in our area impacted by Hurricane Idalia will receive their share of more than half a million dollars in Florida Disaster Fund recovery grants. Governor Ron DeSantis announced the grants earlier this week. Expedited $50,000 grants will be given to the 11 organizations to help the long-term recovery services within the communities. The local counties receiving the money include Citrus, Hernando, the Tri-County area, and the Suwannee Valley. Leaders in the city of Alachua are asking neighbors for their input for their plan to revitalize the downtown area. The city will hold an input session tomorrow. The meeting will discuss the five-year strategic plan to upgrade downtown and if they have supported the residents. If you'd like to attend, it will be held from 11.30 to 1 p.m. at the James A. Lewis Commission Chambers. A Levy County couple is safe after being rescued from their truck that was stuck off a boat ramp. Deputies responded to a call just before 9 p.m. Saturday night at the boat ramp at the end of County Road 40. They say the pair were in the bed of the truck about 75 yards into the Gulf of Mexico. The victims, a 77-year-old man and a 68-year-old woman, tried to swim to shore, but the water was too cold. Two deputies jumped in to rescue them. The victims were taken to a nearby hospital to be treated. The deputies were also checked out, but returned to, the du to duty that same night. Coming up next, Florida is top of the list when it comes to retirees. The three things that keep them flocking to the Sunshine State. Plus, the local initiative in the fight against the opioid crisis is recognizing a milestone. We'll tell you how a police department is working to change lives for the better. You're watching WUFT-TV News. The Ocala Police Department is doing their part to help curb the growing opioid epidemic. Over the last five years, officers have responded to hundreds of calls of overdose incidents. OPD launched their heroin opioid amnesty program back in 2018. It helps people get off these addictive drugs. In addition to the calls, the department says another important part of their program is the availability of a treatment program. If an addict seeks their help, OPD will admit them into a treatment facility free of charge. January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month, and the Department of Homeland Security created the Blue Campaign to help the general public recognize indicators of human trafficking and teach how to appropriately respond to possible cases. This month, DHS is posting information about some of the signs of human trafficking. 
Some of these signs may include the victim appearing disconnected and controlled, even dramatically changing behavior, or a lack of personal possessions. You can support, report suspicious activity to the NHT hotline at 1-888-373-7888 or online at ice.gov tips. The IRS announced they will be officially accepting and processing your 2023 tax returns this upcoming Monday. The IRS will not accept your returns until the 29th. However, you do not need to wait until then to work on your taxes if using a software company or tax professionals. IRS free file is now available on irs.gov and will also offer a pilot of IRS direct file, expected to be widely available mid-March. The expanded in-person service will meet taxpayers by opening or reopening taxpayer assistance centers. For most taxpayers, the deadline to file their personal return, pay any old taxes, or to request an extension is April 15th. Florida is the number one state to retire in. That's according to a new study by WalletHug. The study also ranked Florida number one for quality of life for among senior citizens in all 50 states. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says the state continues to attract new residents because of a favorable tax structure, low crime rate, and a record economic growth. The Hawktown Medieval Fair will kick off downtown this weekend. The fair will be held at Depot Park where people can enjoy activities like sword fighting, medieval dancing, and royal knighting ceremonies. There will also be a food court of fair favorites including turkey legs. The fair will be held this Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and is free and open to all ages. Professional chalk artists will be on hand for this year's chalk festival in Ocala. The event will, be, will feature not only local artists but vendor booths, food trucks, and live music. Neighbors will also get a chance to create their own chalk art. The event is this Saturday at Tuscola Park on Northeast 5th Street. The free event starts at 10 a.m. and will end at 6 p.m. We have severe weather moving across the southeast. We even have some flood alerts happening. I'll let you know who's seeing all of this mess next on the other side of the break. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Right now have jumped up anywhere from 5 to 15 degrees warmer than yesterday, even warmer in some spots in Columbia County, Live Oak, Cross City, High Springs are looking at closer to 16 degrees warmer. Now we topped off in the low 80s today. That's about 17 degrees above where we should be. We hit 81 degrees today in Gainesville, 82 for many of our counties further south in Bronson, Cedar Key and Crystal River and upper 70s out east along the coast. Now looking east, we're seeing increased clouds that look like they could give way to some storms later on. That's due to that onshore flow out of the east and that's also helping our temperatures to feel pretty warm this time of day. Now as high pressure continues to move away from us, we'll see this plume of moisture across the southeast begin to trickle into our area closer to home. So tonight that easterly flow is going to pull in a little bit more moisture to lead to some fog to develop overnight and those lows are only going to be in the mid 60s. So it'll be a pretty warm night out. Thursday morning, you'll be waking up to temperatures in the mid and low 60s, and then we'll see those rain chances increase as we head throughout the afternoon tomorrow. So after lunchtime, we're looking at a few spotty showers, but these showers are very off and on. You can't rule out an isolated thunderstorm, especially further south, but other than that, we're looking at mostly dry conditions throughout the majority of the day tomorrow, but look how hot it gets over the next couple of days. Thursday and Friday, we're just three degrees shy of that record temperature. Saturday, we widen that gap just a little bit, but normal temperature is 67 degrees and we're going to be in the low 80s. So huge departure from average. So Saturday, it's looking really nice, especially if you're headed out to all of these outdoor events we have going on, like the chalk walk, you can head out to the springs, and there's also that Hogtown Medieval Fair over in Depot Park Saturday. We're looking at partly cloudy and breezy conditions for the morning, sun and clouds in the afternoon, a low chance of showers in the evening, and then we'll see that slow moving front begin to stall out. And as it continues to push our way, we're going to see those rain chances continue to stay slightly elevated, but it's not going to be a washout this weekend. So we're going to be going from muggy feels like conditions with our dew points, and then we're dropping down into the refreshing zone by next week. So we got to get through this hot stretch of temperatures in the 80s over the next couple of days, but then winter returns by the beginning of next week.
Coming up next on WFT News, it's another big interconference test tonight for the Florida men's basketball team, but will they be up for the challenge? We'll be talking all about this key matchup and what it will take for Florida to reach a 500 conference record after the break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching WUFT TV News. Happy Hump Day and welcome into sports. I'm Bradley Schimmel. Tonight is another big test for Gator men's basketball as they welcome an SEC foe into town. Well, we're joined now by WUFT's Daniel Haviv, who is live outside the O'Connell Center. Daniel, what can you tell us? Yeah, Bradley, we're still three hours away until tip-off for Gators men's basketball's clash with Mississippi State. Now, tonight's a really big opportunity for this Florida team as they can finally reach that 500 conference record and establish themselves as a contender in the SEC. Now, the Gators come back home after splitting two games to Tennessee and Missouri on the road. The X factor in both of these games was junior guard Walter Clayton Jr. In both games combined, Clayton dropped 31 points and went 7 of 8 from the free throw line. Free throws have been a challenge for the Gators this season, and despite some recent improvement, the Gators are still ranked dead last in free throw percentage in the SEC. A win tonight against the Bulldogs will require success from the charity line and aggressive rebounding. Tip-off is set for 8.30 p.m. Reporting live from outside the O'Connell Center, Daniel Haviv, WUFT News. Thanks, Daniel. Meanwhile, Gator women's basketball has a big SEC showdown coming up as well. Tomorrow night, the Gators will play Ole Miss on the road and will look to rebound after losing four of the last five games. Despite their recent struggles, Florida has managed to succeed offensively, averaging 76 points over their last three games. They'll need another strong performance when they head to Oxford tomorrow night. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 p.m. At the high school level, yesterday's slate of boys basketball games featured some heavyweight matchups that did not disappoint. First, we turn our attention to Oak Hall, where the 10-5 Eagles hosted the 13-4 Fort White Indians. The Eagles, pictured in white, simply could not miss as they decisively handed their Indians their fifth loss by a score of 50-32. Not much offense for Fort White as they now have lost two of their last three games, while Oak Hall has won five of their last seven. Taking a look at a few other games from last night, Gainesville High School was blown out by the Williston Devils, <clears throat> excuse me, 40, or 71 to 46. Meanwhile, the Hawthorne Hornets defeated the Buholtz Bobcats by a score of 65 to 60, and Oakleaf took down Bradford 65 to 46. As for tonight, Santa Fe High School will host the Eastside Rams, and North Marion will face Wildwood. Both of these games are scheduled for 7:30 p.m. Over to the Diamond, where the SEC softball preseason poll was released earlier today. After finishing 8th in the SEC last season, Florida is projected to finish 7th for the 2024 season. We'll get our first look at this year's team when they begin their season on February 9th at Oregon State. And to wrap things up, Florida baseball is almost upon us. This Friday, the team will host their first open spring practice of the 2024 season, with an inter-squad scrimmage scheduled to take place at 4.30. And get this, guys, the season opener is only two weeks away. I'm excited. It's starting to feel like baseball weather out there. Warm weather is a home run in my book. Dara? <laughs> well, you're in luck this week. We are looking at significantly warmer temperatures with our overnight lows looking more like our average highs. This week we'll get through temperatures in the low 80s before we see winter return next week. Thanks, Zara. BBC World News is up next, and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. But your Florida news is always on on WUFT.org. Have a good night.